Hi there, hope you're having a lovely day so far. Well, for many, the idea of self-isolation with the ability to stay home is a, is a dream come true. There's no drop off and pick up from daycare, from kinder, from pre preschool or primary school. There's no peak hour traffic. And let's face it, you can stay home in your PJs all day if you like. But when people are stuck indoors for long periods of time, especially with young children, it can increase the risk of exposure to safety hazards in and around the home. And this is something that we need to take into consideration in view of our current situation when, let's face it, we are all busier than normal, juggling working from home combined with extra stress and responsibility of supervising, entertaining and homeschooling our kids. Now to help bring out um, the, the issues and the topics around this and to share expert information and advice on how we can make our homes Kids Safe, we welcome our very special guest, Melanie Courtney, the Kids Safe Victoria CEO. Now, as an introduction, Kids Safe Australia um, was established in 1979 and they are a charitable organisation dedicated to the prevention of unintentional death and serious injury to children aged from um, birth to 15 years. Thank you so much for your time today, Melanie. How are you? I'm well, thanks, Rachel. Thanks so much for having me. It's, it's certainly a different and strange time, and I empathise with all of that introduction that you just provided around homeschooling and working and all the challenges that do come with that. Yes, it is. Um, I, don't, I don't want to use the, fra the phrase um, pre unprecedented times because we've heard it so many times in the media and everything else, but definitely it, it is presenting a whole heap of new challenges uh, to, to modern living. Um, more so than we've ever experienced before in our history. Now, to begin with, could you tell us a little bit more about Kids Safe and how, as, as an organisation, uh, do you actually help to support Australian families? Sure. So, Kids Safe uh, was started in 1979 by a group of paediatricians who were sick of seeing so many children coming through injured um, or, or worse uh, in the emergency department. So. Uh, we've been around for a long time. We've got an office in every single state and territory. Uh, and basically our, our role is to educate and empower families to keep their kids safe. Uh, mm -hmm. A role which we do very seriously. We've made a lot of different um, you know, families and, and work really closely with communities and stakeholders to make sure that you know, our key messages do get across. Uh, we also do a lot in terms of advocacy. So um, you know, legislation changes and improvements have certainly come along in that time. So, um, you know, our, our remit is quite broad, um, which obviously makes it really enjoyable and we're very passionate about what we do do. Mm, and so Kids Safe has recently celebrated your 40th year anniversary and this is a tremendous uh, accomplishment. Um, now, what is the organisation most proud of uh, achieving during that time? Look, that's a great question, Rachel, and I think there's, there's so many things that we could put onto that list, but I, I think the most important thing is when we were started back in 1979, there were around 750 children who were dying every single year from preventable injury. We're now down to around 157 uh, a year, which is still, you know, for, for a well-developed country like we are, that's still three children every single week. So it's still really significant, but compared to where it was, we've, we've really come a long way. So I guess that's just the, the broad overall uh, achievement, I guess. And it's, it's not done alone. We do that in collaboration with a lot of partners, a lot of stakeholders and um, other people who, who do help with those as well. And when we take into consideration how much the, po the population has increased um, over the 40 years as well, and considering the numbers have decreased down to what they are, that is a real, really, really great accomplishment. So well done. Congratulations on that. Um, and look, we published your article and the title is How to Keep Your Little Ones Kids Safe at Home. There's some really great messages in this. So for a parent who hasn't read the article yet, can you please give us a little bit of an overview of what it's about and just tell us what inspired you to write it? Look, I think home safety is really, uh, really close to our hearts. Um, we, particularly at this time, we've got parents at home who are trying to work, you've got kids at home who are homeschooling, um, you know, there's just that that extra stress in there of, of how to, to keep your home safe for children. So I guess we thought we'd just provide some practical tips for parents to enable them to do that. Um, because I think when you look at 
home safety is a, a sort of whole topic. It can be a little bit overwhelming. You know, we talk about curtain and blind cords and button batteries and falls and water safety. And, you know, if you look at those in isolation, they, they can be a bit overwhelming. But we do have a home safety checklist. And, and I think that's what we encourage families to do. Just take the pressure off, take your checklist, go through the house and, and really make those changes. Uh, particularly if you've got young children. So obviously home is the leading cause of um, the leading location for, for most injuries for children under the age of five in particular which makes a lot of sense because it's where they spend most of their time uh, and you know when you're a new parent first time parent in particular home safety might not be high on your list of priorities you, you're working out how to feed your child you're working out how to sleep both your baby and yourself. Uh, so it can be something that sort of slips through the cracks. So, you know, for us, it's, it's really important and it's where, where most um, preventable safety does sort of start. Mm. We'll have um, a link through to that, um, the checklist that parents can access as well as a link to the article, which has got um, a ton of information in there. Um, you do mention in the article's first line um, that home is the most common location where children are injured. Could you tell us why this is so? Yeah, absolutely. It's it's because they spend a lot of their time there, but it's also where they're, they're learning and developing a lot of new skills. So, you know, it's usually where they learn to start crawling for the first time, which presents a new set of hazards. It's where they'll start walking for the first time. You know, once they do reach each of those developmental milestones, they actually can access a whole new list of hazards, which is really, um, you know, they're such exciting milestones as parents to go through. But they certainly present challenges as well. So, um, you know, there's, and, and, and children obviously aren't aware of, you know, what the, what the risks are, what the dangers are. Um, they're top heavy as well when they're younger, so they can fall really easily into things, including buckets of water. Uh, so, you know, the home, home can be really tricky uh, for children. Mm. And also safe and welcoming as well. <laughs> um, I would love to read a, a short paragraph from the article and sort of quoting you now. Um, pre pre preventable um, injuries are the leading cause of death for Australian children aged 1 to 14 years. And the one um, and, and one of the leading causes um, of hospitalisation. So every week across our country, three children are killed and a further 68,000 are admitted to hospital for treatment due to preventable injuries, uh, the kind um, often referred to as accidents. So the home is the most common location where these injuries occur and it is our youngest children aged under five who are most at risk. So you also mentioned um, that the home is the environment where children spend the majority of their early uh, years learning, developing, growing and playing and therefore it's really essential that we make um, them as safe as possible. So I'd love to know um, is it the fact that the homes and our homes are built with more adults in mind that um, childhood in injuries occur or is it something else? That's a really great question, Rachel. Um, one of the things that we do recommend that families do, which we always get a few strange looks about, is, is actually to get down on hands and knees and crawl around the house and look from a child's perspective because it is completely different to what we see. Uh, so, and obviously if it's safe to do so, not heavily pregnant, if you're heavily pregnant, don't get down on hands and knees and do anything like that. But, but really, you do that sort of thing and you see open drawers of a, of a cabinet as a stair to climb if you're a child. Like it's, it's a very, very different perspective. So, uh, you know, I think that's definitely the case that it is, it is designed for adult functionality and, you know, often the, the child safety things are an add-on, um, which, you know, you might have to put in gates to, to secure off certain locations and certain rooms and, you know, remove furniture as well that's not safe or at least secure it. So, uh, yeah, I think that's a really interesting question. Mm. So what are the stats and how many children um, are injured or, or die from preventable injuries? So as you said, it's, it's three kids a week. And when you think about that, it's, it's three previously healthy kids per week that their family is not taking home. Like That, that is huge. And then you talk about the 68,000 per year, which are admitted to hospitals. So, you know, that's not emergency department inju injuries. That's actually an admission to hospital, which can result in severe disabilities as well and, and life got ongoing consequences. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's, it's really those ones that we do focus on. And um, I think 
you know, people sometimes don't take injury that seriously because they think, oh, it's, it's just a fall or it's just a scrape or it's just a bruise. You know, obviously those things are part of normal development, which we really encourage and, and are really necessary for kids. It's, it's the more significant injuries that, that we really focus on and try to prevent because that can have a huge impact on a child's quality of life, on their ability to exercise and, you know, be active into the future, um, as well as obviously on a family if, if they're, they're, the worst does occur. And like we said, three every single week, it's, it's huge. Yeah, unbelievable. And uh, what are some of the, um, the top safety hazards to, that parents should be aware of um, in their homes um, that can cause injuries to children? Well, there are a lot of injury, a lot of hazards in the home, but again, they can easily be rectified with use of that home safety checklist. Um, a couple that we've just seen that are sort of coming up now with the whole COVID pandemic are, are home gyms that people are starting to have. Um, I can speak experience. My husband's turned our garage into a into a gym, um, and the kids love it. They love going out there, but it's really important to to try and make sure those sorts of areas are secured um, and that they don't have unsupervised access. And even when they are supervised, that there's some um, there's some equipment that they just shouldn't be around. So really heavy weights or treadmills, things like that, can cause a danger to children. Uh, so so that's more sort of in this current environment that we're seeing, and and things like poisons as well. So hand sanitizer seems to be everywhere at the moment. Um, making sure that all poisons reach of children, uh, you know, laundry detergents and things like that can just take a little lick to, to really cause some damage to a child. Um, and then a couple of the other ones, I guess we're coming into winter as well. So, you know, making sure that you, you've changed your batteries in your smoke alarm, which hopefully everyone did at Daylight Saving. Uh, carbon monoxide week is at the end of uh, April and that's run by the Chase and Tyler Foundation. Um, Vanessa, who runs that, lost her two children to a carbon monoxide poisoning incident and has just been amazing ever since in, in really raising awareness around that. So, you know, if you're starting to use your heaters because it's getting a bit colder, um, make sure that you do get them serviced every one to two years and get a carbon mon monoxide um, detector in your, in your house. Uh, other key ones, one that I'm personally very passionate about, um, furniture tip overs. Again, we've got a family that have been, you know, they've lost their son. Um, Due to a furniture tip over, Blake Shaw, uh, just just devastating. And it, it's one of those things that, you know, if you've got heavy set furniture and it's not secured to the wall or to the floor or wherever it's supposed to be secured to, um, you know, take five minutes to do it. Go to the go to the local hardware store, spend ten dollars on a um, attachment and make sure that you do anchor it to the wall because it can, you know, it can save a life at the end of the day. Um, the same with curtain, uh, curtain and blind cords. We had two deaths in 2009 and had a whole host of new um, legislation that came in afterwards and awareness campaigns. And it's been amazing to see the impact that's had. Uh, but we did have two um, incidents in Victoria late last year, one that, that had a horrible outcome um, for a five-year-old. So, you know, those sorts of things. If you've got hanging or loop and blind cords, again, same as the furniture, take the time to secure them to the wall. Um, button batteries. The things that terrify me the most as a as a parent, you know, they are quite small and innocuous looking. But if a child does swallow one of those, they can burn through the esophagus in just you know up to two hours. So, again, before this before the COVID pandemic hit, we were seeing twenty um, emergency department presentations every single week across the country from button battery ingestion. So. Just being aware of, you know, what items in your household do have button batteries. It might be like they're in remotes, they're in phones, they're in anything that lights up. If it lights up and it's small, it's probably got a button battery in it. So, you know, make sure that those compartments are secured um, and that they, um, you know, they can't be accessed by children if they can get rid of them or we'll keep them out, re out of reach. Um, I, I don't have them in my house. I hate them. I'm terrified of them. Um, I've met a beautiful mother, Alison Rees, who lost her daughter, Bella, um, from ingesting a button battery. They don't know where that button battery came from. And it's just, like, it's just so heartbreaking. So, you know, I feel like those families are going through what, what they've gone through um, and, and to tell their stories and share their stories, which is really difficult um, to do, particularly now with, you know, a lot of the reaction that comes back via social media, you know, the, the least that we can sort of do is really take the time to make sure that we have checked our house for those things and, and, and done something about it. Mm. What about water safety as well? I mean, in, in most sort of um, states, um, the temperature is still warm enough for children to be jumping into the backyard pool as well at the moment. Um, maybe not so much as we're heading into winter, but tell, tell us a little bit more about this as well. 
and say it's definitely cold, too cold in uh, Victoria for that at the moment. But yeah. if you look at the into winter, we see different issues. So, um, you know, we do see substantial drownings every year. Usually over 60% of them are attributable to backyard pools. So that's something that families who do have pools need to be aware of, winter or not, kids are attracted to water. So make sure that you do have a functioning um, pool gate and, and latch and that that's um, up to current standards. The other ones to look out for, particularly coming into winter when we are likely to have more rain and um, things like that, are buckets that might fill up with water. You know, we've seen kids, kids, all it takes for a child to drown is just a few centimetres of water. So it's literally just between their nose and their mouth. If that can be covered by water, um, they can drown in it. And it takes 20 seconds. So particularly for those younger children that we were talking about before who were really top heavy and can just fall in and, and not have the ability to get themselves up. It doesn't take much. So again, it's, it's honestly, it's just being aware of those things, you know, you maintain your pool barrier, your, your pool gate, um, empty any buckets and, and supervise your kids. If you do need to, particularly now, because they're probably home all the time, if you do need to, you know, go to the loo or, or whatever it is, um, make sure they're in a safe play area that they can't access any of those hazards. Mm -hmm. So what can parents do to prevent all of these injuries then? Well, and really it is, it's getting down on their hands and knees, it's getting that home safety checklist, it's going around their house. So once you know what the hazards are, which is the first the first big issue, then it's working out what to do with them. So is it securing them to a wall? Is it removing them, removing access from the child? Um, you know, what, what actually is going to make that particular hazard safe? And, and the biggest one and the most important one is doing it now. I think, you know, there are so many things that get on our list that we say, oh, we'll do it tomorrow, we'll do it tomorrow. You know, child safety, it's a really important one to do now. Like if you, if you know that there's a problem, if you know that curtain and blind cord needs to be fixed, don't wait till tomorrow, don't wait till your child finds it and, and you know, has a play with it like they inevitably do. You know, just go and do it. Mm -hmm. And um, I know that um, KidSafe do a lot of work in conjunction with, um, with the government to, to make positive change. Can you maybe just give us a little bit of a, an explanation as to what you're actually doing on, on a larger scale at the moment? Yeah, absolutely. So we do a lot of work around the country and it's, it's different in every state and territory in terms of um, what programs they do deliver. Um, in Victoria at the moment, we, and it's halted for now, but hopefully we'll start re-delivering soon, um, is the Safe, Safe, Safe Kids program where we're providing free child car restraint checks for, um, for families. Um, and that's not just for parents and carers. I think, uh, sorry, not just for parents as well. It's for grandparents and, and anyone who cares for a child um, you know, grandparents are actually one of our biggest audiences because they do spend, and I thank my mother in this as well, they do spend a lot of time looking after our children um, and are just amazing. But it's just as important that their house is set up as safely, their car's set up True. as safely as it is for the, for the primary care. So, um, you know, we've been providing that service, which has it's been really interesting. Actually, we've had some fabulous results from that, which will we'll circulate soon. Um, but yeah, basically, I, I think, and again, speaking from Victoria's perspective, you know, there's 80,000 babies, over 80,000 babies born every single year, 35,000 of those are to new parents, or sorry, first time parents. So, you know, it's really important that we do continue to educate and empower those parents to, to know what to do um, with the newborn and, and make sure that they're, they're safe as well. So, you know, that's where we work with government to make sure that it is an, an ongoing message that's getting out there through the maternal and child health system, through the antenatal system, through the early, early childhood sector. You know, it's, it, there's different messages at each point, but all are absolutely critical. Mm -hmm. A really valid point what you were mentioning before about um, ensuring the grandparents' home is equally as safe um, as the parents' home. So, yeah, thank you for sharing that. Um, I know that KidSafe have got a heap of different uh, free resources for parents. You've mentioned the checklist, which we'll ensure we'll have that link in the introduction paragraph. Is there any other um, resources that you actually have um, within, within your website um, that, uh, that parents could actually sort of go to find that, that could help them during this time? Absolutely. Uh, so if you go to the kidsafe.com.au website, we do have a lot of, we've got National Burns Awareness Month coming up in June. So we've got a lot of resources up there and we are actively um, working towards getting some resources directed towards preschool kids and school kids. Uh, so that, you know, you've got something to do with them in this time as well on the weekends, not during the homeschooling times, um, which are complicated enough. Uh, so we've got lots up there. Kids WA has actually got a virtual house online, which is fabulous to, to go through and look at the hazards more visually than just a checklist. 
Um, there's a heat, there's there's videos, there's quizzes, there's there's all sorts of things up there. So do really encourage you to take the time to to visit and you know read whatever is of interest to you. Mm -hmm. You've given us some really critical information today. Um, if you were to summarise your key messages uh, for parents listening, um, what would they be? Oh, I think the key one, download that home safety checklist and, and do it today. Go around, find out what in your house is actually a hazard and figure out what you're going to do to modify it and then just make the change. And I also think it's really important to educate kids as early as possible about what the hazards are. Um, it's not their responsibility to keep themselves safe, but it is really important to let them know that, you know, fires aren't safe to touch or go near. The earlier you can start that education process, the better. So that it really is a holistic approach to safety. Mm -hmm. And if parents want more information um, from, from KidSafe uh, here in Victoria or any other state and territory, where can they find you? So we do have an office in every state and territory. Uh, we've got a, a website for each state and territory. We've got the national website and we have a social media sites for every state and territory too. So you cannot miss us if you're looking. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. We'll have all of those links in the introduction paragraph. We're so grateful for your time. Thank you so much and uh, can't wait for the next chat. Take care and uh, give my love to the kids. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, Rachel. Bye. Take care.